introduce the new subject to you, and the title of the message is called Teachable, with a question mark. Teachable. And the word teachable, um, part of the definition is a person who is capable of being taught. It is a person who is apt and willing to learn. Apt and willing to learn. How many think that we as the church could learn a few more things? Or do you think you've arrived to the fullness of the stature of Christ? I got to bring that out, you know, just to set the bar high enough. Jesus said, it's enough for the servant to be as his master, okay? Um, And we need to remain teachable. One thing that I've noticed about myself through the years is that I can quickly become uh, puffed up knowledge-wise. So in my area of service to the body of Christ and my call is primarily doing this. It's speaking, it's studying the word, it's preparing, it's ministering. It's, it, my portion is uh, nurturing, feeding, helping uh, those who are believers spiritually get the right nutrition into their life from the word of God so that they can grow and do and be active believers in their world. So part of Faith Family Church is what? Life in Christ. Well, the life of Christ is in every believer. And what I believe the Lord, in fact, I know the Lord wants to do this because we know it from Scripture in Ephesians. I believe and know that the gifts, like the five, what we call the five-fold ministry gifts, are what they're supposed to do is develop the body so the body can do the work of the ministry. You say, well, what is preaching? That's just my work. You have your work. Just like I'm supposed to be a light and a witness to my neighbor, you're supposed to be a light and a witness to your neighbor. You know, it's really not the best. I mean, it can happen this way, but it's really not the best if your neighbor has a prayer need that you call me and have me go visit them. It's really best that you just use your faith and do it. It's really best that you just step out, cross over the threshold and slap fear in the face and get right into the, not your neighbor, don't slap your neighbor in the face, no, I'm not talking about that, and just go ahead and minister to them yourself. Why? Because the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead, if you're born again, now lives in you. And that spirit does what? It not only quickens and makes alive your mortal body, but if you apply faith, everybody go like this. You have hands. Good. You qualify. So if you apply faith with your hands, you can lay hands on them and the anointing will flow through you. Stop waiting for a lightning bolt. Just do it. Just go do it. Nike was right, at least on that. Just be a doer. (laughs) Just be a doer. So there are areas where we can learn, where we need to continue to grow and develop. Paul made this statement. He said, forgetting those things which are behind, I press on toward the mark of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Or in other words, you know, I haven't arrived yet, but I'm not going to go into reverse. I'm not going to start backing up because I ran into something that I don't understand. I've shared this story before, and I want to say it again because I believe it's a principle that every believer should have in their lives. Years ago, Lester Summerall was being taken to a meeting by a driver, and he pulled up to the meeting in the parking spot that the driver thought he was going to be able to get into. um, He couldn't get into it, and so he started to put the car in reverse, and Lester Summerall said, what are you doing? And he said, well, I'm going to back up, and he said, no, drive around the building. I don't back up. People say, well, that just seems like, you know, just ridiculous. Maybe. But guess what he didn't do? He didn't back up. In other words, he would make this statement, I live every day for the day that I'm going to stand before the Lord. And, and, And Paul made this statement, he pressed on toward the mark. He had a goal, a prize in mind, and as believers, if we're going to have that prize in mind and continue to move forward with the Lord, we have to have that mentality. I don't go back. After I got born again, I had many opportunities to go back, but now it's 23 years later. What's the point? 
You know, I cannot, I can safely say I am not disappointed with the decisions to continually follow the Lord that I've made. Why? I'm not going back. I'm moving forward. Part of moving forward is being teachable. There are many times where um, the Lord's wanting us to move forward and we've been unteachable or I've been unteachable. Or how many have done this? I, I worked construction for years and you'd work with somebody who had been in the construction field in a particular area and they had been very good in that area and they were so good they thought they knew it all. Have you ever met that person? Don't elbow the person next to you. Some, Alexander Pope said this, some people will never learn anything because they understand everything too soon. (laughs) Henry Kaiser said this, he said, I make progress by having people around me who are smarter than I am and listening to them. And I assume that everybody is smarter about something than I am. Isn't that good? How do you know if you're closed off? So when it comes to being teachable, and I'm not, I mean, this could be applied in in many areas. Brother Hagin used to say this to us all the time, Kenneth E. Hagin. He'd say, the more I learn, the less I see I know. In other words, if you have a God that you've totally mentally figured out, you don't have Jehovah. (laughs) Why? Because I read through this Bible every year. The last two years I've done it chronologically. And, uh, And I read through it and I go, oh, there it is. There it is. I read through it and go, oh, Lord, you are amazing. And he says, yes, I am. See, and that's not even an arrogant statement because it's just flat true. (laughs) You you are amazing, Lord. And and so what happens is as we're in the word, as we're we're, uh, uh, hearing teaching and ministry, it's not that we're not assessing things because being teachable is not being gullible. It's not that we're not looking at things. We're not uh, uh, weighing what's being said against the scriptures and against the Holy Spirit within us. But it is that we are open and pliable. A teachable person is a pliable person. If you constantly find yourself being resistant to everything except your favorite doctrine. I I got like a little bit of a come on on that one. Come on, Pentecostals, and or word of faiths, or charismatics, or whatever you want to say. I don't care what, fa- what, what brand you have on your, on your arm. It doesn't matter to me. How many know that we could learn something from the Baptists? <laughs> Come on. I've met some Catholics that would put Pentecostals to shame. They called, there was a, one lady, uh, I don't remember her name, but they called her the flying nun. I had a, my grandparents went to the Episcopal church here in town and they had a minister there named Father John. He's not there anymore. He's actually a missionary in Africa now. Do You know, he was baptized in the Holy Spirit with the evidence speaking in other tongues. Do You know, he cast out devils. Do You know, he laid hands on the sick and watched them recover in a robe with a collar turned around. Because you know why? God doesn't care about that. (laughs) He cares about the heart and the faith coming out. Amen? In other words, how many know that love triumphs over all? It never fails. God's love doesn't. And so as we move forward in the kingdom of God, it doesn't mean we have to let go of our convictions that we know from the word, but it does mean that we need to be remain pliable and teachable as we go so that we can accept those things. You know, I saw this wonderful thing because my background is word of faith, okay? I went to Kenneth Hagin School. I graduated from Rainbow Bible Training College. I, 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 I'm, st- I'm ordained through them. And you'll see different moves of God all over the place. And not everybody does the same thing. And what I've noticed about different leaders in the body of Christ is they differ on some things. 
You know, I was scrolling through, and the Lord had been dealing with me about this because I started to get an attitude about certain things. Like I knew it. You know what I mean? How many have ever done that before? Most of you are honest. That's good. Um, <laughs> in other words, I had gotten to the point where like, this minister knows it all. You're wrong. Jesus knows it all. We don't. If Paul, from his position and the revelation that he received, said we look through a glass, guess what? So do we. There are things we don't know. There are just things we don't know. So we need to be pliable and walk in love and teachable. I saw this was so wonderful. I love it. I saw, and so I started to listen to people that I thought that I had disagreements with. And you know what I found out more than anything? I agreed with them on more than I disagreed with. And you know what else I found out through the years? I can easily, straight across the board, every brand, every denomination, every group, generally as an overarching rule, believes in the love of God. God. And what can we agree on? Amen? That doesn't mean you have to compromise your conviction. It's just where can... How many know it's easier to flow when there's a flow of love than it is when there's resistance and anger and offense and I know it and, and this is my doctrine and come on. And a religious spirit creeps in. Come on, the religious people of Jesus' day, they were having issues with Jesus. But you know what Jesus was having? Freedom and deliverance. They could not line him up properly according to their doctrines and pages of notes that they had accumulated. I almost got that out. They had accumulated. <laughs> my zeal was greater than my oxygen. <laughs> <laughs> that they had accumulated. But you know what they couldn't get? Freedom for people. Freedom for people. We want freedom for people. And I love this word, and I stand by this word, but I do not know it all. How many could admit you don't know it all? Okay? But I saw this on Facebook. I'll get to it now. Kenneth Copeland and Bill Johnson together. Kenneth Copeland was blessing Bill Johnson, praying for him. Why? Is it going to do us any good to fight each other? Paul said this. He said, you're saying I'm of Paul. I'm of Apollos. I'm of Christ. Listen, if the minister is God's, they're yours. That's what he said. Now, why did he say that? Because as a minister... We're called and anointed to minister to the body. And if God can get it to us and through us, it can help somebody. And so they're all yours. Do you know I read Billy Graham stuff? You know who I like? Um, I mean, I love them all. But have you ever listened to Ann Graham? Oh, man, she's a fireball, man. And, you know, we may disagree on things, but I can learn from her. So this is where this came from, too. This is part of this right here. This is part of where this came from. Years ago, I was sitting, at, uh, sitting in class at Rama, and Brother Hagin was sharing along these lines of being teachable. And he said this. He said that he was in a service, because most of you know this, but maybe some of you don't. Brother Hagin was famous for Mark eleven twenty three 23 and 24. Whatsoever things you desire when you pray, believe you receive them, and you shall have them. Whoever shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed, be thou cast into the sea, does not doubt in his heart, but believes those things which he says, he will have whatever he says, right? And people have come against that for years. You're the blab it and grab it, the name it and claim it, the, you know, name it and frame it, all this other stuff. And so he was saying, well, he was in a service where this minister was attacking that. And um, how many know it's a bad idea to attack Jesus? Okay, just moving on. Anyway, so Brother Hagin said in that moment, he almost shut that preacher off. How many have done that before? I've done that. I raised both hands. I just almost shut him off. But he didn't. He remained pliable and he remained soft and he didn't get offended. And he said about 10 minutes later, that man answered a question he had about the Bible for 20 years. In other words, 
if he would have shut him off, he would have missed the answer. Let me ask you something. Would God give you an answer through somebody who offended you? <laughs> oh, yeah. He would. He's just like that. It's a good opportunity for us to be what? Humble and teachable. So let's give one scripture here in Proverbs chapter 1. I almost got out of my introduction, but that's okay. This is a, this is a foundational scripture for this series right here, and I just want you to hear it. And Judy, if you come, or whoever's coming on keys, you can come. We'll, we'll wrap up here. Praise God. Proverbs chapter 1, verse 7. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of what? Yeah, knowledge, wisdom. But it says this, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. So I don't want to be a fool. Do you? I don't know anybody that does. But the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. In other words, the reverence, the awe of God is the beginning of knowledge. There should be something in us that goes, Lord, I submit to you. You are my everything. Lord, you have all the answers. You are the maker. You are the creator. You've put it all together. And I thank you that you, as I honor and reverence you, it is the beginning, the door in, the gate in to wisdom. I fear God. We must, we must fear God more than we fear people. Come on. Jesus said that, right? He said, don't fear a man who can only kill your body. In other words, your body is not as important as your spirit. I'm not saying it's unimportant. I just said it's not as important. He said, fear God who could throw your body and your spirit out into hell. But don't fear man. All they can do is kill your body. That's all they can do. Uh, listen to this in the uh, Amplified. It says, The reverent and worshipful fear of the Lord is the beginning and principle and choice part of knowledge. It is the starting point, its starting port, point and its essence. But fools despise skillful and godly wisdom, instruction, and discipline. You know, that actually, that word, talking about instruction, has to do with discipline. We'll get into these next week. But it says this in the Passion Translation. How then does a man gain the essence of wisdom? We cross the threshold of true knowledge when we live in obedient devotion to God. Stubborn know-it-alls will, uh, will never stop to do this, for they scorn wisdom and knowledge. They scorn wisdom and knowledge. Come on, for me, when I got born again, I had to make adjustments, changes in my life in order for the establishment of the resurrection within me to begin to germinate in my heart and spring forth into shoots out from me of fruits of righteousness. Something had to change in me. I had to go from the place of dealing with my problems by lighting up marijuana versus... Well, maybe I just need the wisdom of God and the baptism of the Holy Spirit. I heard preachers that were willing to make statements like there's no high like the most high. And that spoke to me. Why? Because I had been high. I mean, I was low, but I was, my head was out there. <laughs> In other words, I found out what? <laughs> I found out that God had, was, had equipped me to walk through life with not needing any of the world's way of coping. I don't need coping mechanisms. I've got a resurrection mechanism. I've got the person of Jesus Christ on the inside of me. And so in, when it comes to my family, when it comes to my marriage, when it comes to ministry, when it comes to family, when it comes to dealing with church family, when it comes to government, when it comes to money, when it comes to anything that's in my life, I have a deposit of the one who conquered all of hell living on the inside of me that by faith I draw from in reverential fear and honor of him and begin to apply that to my life by word and by deed see my first thought in a problem is no longer ah, what are we going to do 
Lord, I don't want to deal with it, so I'm just going to go drown it. No. I go, Lord, you're with me. Thank you. Thank you that you're with me. Thank you that your promises are true. Thank you, Lord, that you said that if I would submit to you and resist the devil, he would flee from me. Come on, look that up sometime. It means to run from you as in terror. The devil is afraid of you if you're born again. I said... I said... You are seated in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. You've got the resurrection in you. If you're born again, let him out. <laughs> let him out. Stand with me, please. You say, preacher, why do you got to get so intense about it? It's not me. It's the Holy Spirit trying to get your attention. Come on, I, I, I mean, I, I want you to know this. I need to know for me who's in me. You need to know for you who's in you. And once you know for you who's in you, then you can know who's in you for somebody else. And you can minister who's in you to them. And then if you do it right and they're open, they can receive into them who's in you. See, the devil would have never crucified Jesus if he would have known what he was doing. Jesus walked through the earth and go, unless a, unless a kernel of wheat fall into the ground and die. And the devil's going, huh, I wonder what he means by that. we got to kill him. <laughs> and God's going, I mean, it's not even a challenge for the Lord. Satan is not a challenge for the Lord. When I was studying that first part of Proverbs, I didn't get to it today, but the Lord said to me, Sean, there is no darkness that I don't have an answer for. It doesn't exist. Jesus went to the very depths of hell. He, he walked right through all the bondages that are filed away and cataloged in hell. And he went, got it, 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 got it. We can beat it, beat it, beat it, beat it. He didn't, there's nothing Satan has. People say, well, but it feels like it is here. I know that's because we're just on this side of it still. We need our minds renewed. Come on, your past abuses, we even talked about, guys, listen, the Lord, if you'll be open to let him down into the crevices of those areas where you're afraid to let anybody go, if you'll let the Holy Spirit go there, he will fix you. Every head bowed, every eye closed. If you're in this place and you don't know the Lord, you've never made him, you've never received Jesus Christ into you. You've never received the spirit of the resurrection. The one who created you longs to live in you. And he came and was crucified and was buried and raised again on the third day so that he could, he could make you his home again. And you're hurt, you're depressed, you've got things inside that are just not right. And you've tried to drown them and it doesn't work. You need this resurrection power within you. Or maybe, yes, you, you know the, you've known the Lord, but you've walked away from him. On either of those, I just want you to raise your hand where you're at because I'm going to pray with you. Don't be hard against the Holy Spirit. Just do it. Be brave. I'm not going to ask you to come up here. I want you to pray where you're at in faith. Ushers, if you want to help me, if there's anybody, I'll give you a couple of seconds and then I'm going to move on. You need to make that decision. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Your freedom is one choice away. One choice. So wonderful. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You're so good to us, Father. Is there anybody? Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Okay. Praise the Lord. Father, we just honor you and bless you. Lord, I thank you that you are ministering to your people. 
your word has penetrated us. Father, we will be doers and not hearers only. Lord, as we go forth, as we continue to move in deep, deeper relationship with you, we thank you, Father, that you are uprooting things out of us in our soul that need not be there. Our lives will never be the same. Let's just, I want to declare this. I just want you to agree with me. I think you will. Um, Father, we just declare in the name of Jesus that this city is going to see the body of Christ rise up. Lord, it's, it'll, it's, listen to me, guys. It's going to have an effect through the governments. Lord, I thank you that you're strengthening the understanding. I ask you to strengthen the understanding and give wisdom to every business person represented. Lord, show them their purpose in business. Lord, every ministry, every minister, every church in this city, Lord, we desire that we go higher. Come on, let's just do this just for a second here. We just speak blessing over our brothers and sisters in Christ. Lord, we reject and resist, Satan, we resist your offenses, your unforgivenesses, the hurts, all of those things. We reject that stuff and we walk in the love of God. We bless them. We bless them in the name of Jesus. Lord, if they disagree, uh, if there's a disagreement or a hurt or a, uh, uh, some sort of offense, Father, we bless, we pray blessing on them in the name of Jesus. We do not speak against other ministers or ministries, Lord, but we, we bless them. We thank you for it in Jesus' name. And we purpose to keep our hearts right, to watch you move in our lives. Thank you, Lord, for doing miracles today. Thank you, Lord, that miracles don't stop because we leave this building. Thank you for healing bodies today, Lord. Thank you for touching minds today. <laughs> thank you for joy. Come on, some of you just need to smile. I mean, you just, you got, God's in you. Joy unspeakable and full of glory. <laughs> You're so good to us, Jesus. We love you. We honor you. We bless you. You're faithful to us. And we say, bless your name. And Lord, I bless these people in Jesus' name. Everybody said, amen. God bless you guys. Have a great week.